Last time on Steely's Corner. I'm the juggernaut, bitch! I've waited very long and I've been very patient. I'm doing Texas Chainsaw. Chainsaw! Well, there goes the damn show. Oh, look at me! Look at me! I'm Leatherface! Look, AJ, uh, maybe I was a bit harsh yesterday, saying that you doing your own episode's gonna ruin the show. We've all gotta work together, so best of luck, alright? You're not scared? Not in the slightest. Is that ham? Yes. You're an idiot. Damn it! Hey guys, what's going on? You know we're out of ham? Hey everybody, and welcome back to Steeler's Corner. I'm AJ, and today we are going to do one of my favorite movies. Especially since I'm a born and bred Texas boy. That's right, the Texas Chainsaw Manicure. Okay, first of all, you're not from Texas. You're from Georgia, and it's Massacre, not Manicure. The Georgia Chainsaw Manicure? It sounds like a movie about a middle-aged woman breaking a nail at Home Depot. <sighs> you are an idiot. Why do you guys always have to spoil my fun? Whatever, chainsaw! In 1974, director Toby Hooper came up with the idea to take the story of real-life Wisconsin necrophile and grave robber Ed Gein. Ed Gein was also used to inspire two other famous cinematic killers, being Norman Bates from Psycho and Hannibal Lecter from the Silence of the Lamb series, and craft it into one of the very first found footage popular movies of all time. Spawned some other good franchises like The Blair Witch, Paranormal Activity. But this was done in such a way, even Roger Ebert initially thought this was a snuff film. <laughs> a snuff film. I'll show you a snuff film. I'm going to be a master of disguise. I'm going to be a master of disguise. I'm going to yeah. be a... <laughs> it killed his career. This review may be a little different than the other ones because I feel like if I get too deep into it, it's going to ruin it. Seriously. Because this isn't really a movie that you watch. It's a movie that you experience. It's the feeling you get when you watch it. Because you don't feel like you're just, you know, watching a slasher movie. You feel like you're like a secret sixth person seeing everything through your eyes. What hell was that noise? That noise that has since become iconic and used in multiple different movies to instill fear is actually a combination of two noises. An old timey flash bulb from an ancient camera slowed down and mixed with the chords of a piano being slightly dragged with a fiddle's bow. Makes for some nightmare inducing noise. Let me at least give you the story kind of set up there so you guys know where we are with everything. A group of teenagers are heading to their old family residence out in the middle of Texas. This includes the main character, Sally, her disabled brother, Franklin, and a handful of their friends as they travel through the Texas heat. They stop off at a gas station and get greeted by a kind of creepy vagrant that runs the place, telling them they don't want to go messing out there in the heat. But the gas station is out of gas, so they travel as far as they can before, you know, running into somebody. This hitchhiker is totally freaking nuts. Anyway, after this douche canoe gets out of the van, they keep on going, and then they eventually runs out of gas. But lo and behold, they're near their family residence, but it seems to be unoccupied. So in the search of finding more fuel, one of them decides to go check out the nearby farmhouse because they hear a noise. 
and we all know how that goes down. Don't go in there. <laughs> Dumbass. One by one, almost every one of their friends seemingly get picked off till we're left with just the siblings. And then they run into a friend of ours. Sandy Herbert, stop! The Leatherface, played by the late, great Gunnar Hansen. Ugh, I, I can't say enough about this guy. He has terrified so many dreams for years to come. Fun fact, one of the only reasons that he actually took the job is because he was one of the only people that tried out that could run full speed and wield a freaking chainsaw at the same time. It's kind of nuts. I'm gonna stop telling the story there because everything else after that is just freaking awesome! Well, I don't care if you're stopping right there. We ain't leaving till Gunner does his dance. Do it, brother! The reason why I said this movie isn't quite a watch as more of it is an experience is because it's not as bloody and gory as you guys may think it is. Yes, there's some blood and some gore, but a lot of the actual action happens off screen. So it gives you the impression that things are happening and in our brain, it makes things worse. Basically every thought that normally goes through my head times 50. In fact, you never actually see the chainsaw penetrate anybody except for one brief scene in the whole movie and that's when Leatherface accidentally drops the chainsaw on his own leg. You mean to tell me Leatherface is a necrophile, a cannibal, and a psychopath? And now you want me to accept that he's also a cutter? I have to draw the line somewhere. This movie spawned an entire franchise with four direct sequels to this one, its own remake series, and a couple prequels thrown in there. The remakes some people say are better, but it is a better slasher movie where again, as I said, this is more something that you have to experience. Some people do prefer the remake over the original, but they stole a lot of the same shots. I like it. The original though probably has one of the best Rotten Tomato scores for a horror movie ever. It is a staggering certified Fresh is the damn day, 89%! Woo! Chainsaw! Well, folks, I do believe my work here today is done. <laughs> Guys, there's a lot of blood. Let me go patch him up. And please sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for coming and watching Day 6, and check out Day 7 tomorrow when we check out the Freaky Friday-esque body swap horror movie, Freaky, led by Vince Vaughn. Body swap? Cool! What the heck was that? I have no idea.